good day folks and welcome back to the channel today we are inside what is probably one of the best looking gr3 cars available it goes without saying that this is definitely a gr3 car and we can prove that it is the mclaren f1 gtr if we go to the very useful search function if we go to change car and click at the top here and organize the cars by category then top left hand corner and select corner by category look what the first one it is it shows in gr3 i've currently owned 39 vehicles in the gr3 category and the first one is the mclaren f1 gtr bmw 95 absolute gem of a car unusual to see it in the gt3 is and if you've purchased it it's a little bit of money i think it's something like 12 and a half and 13 million credits so if you are grinding and you don't own this one, you're going to need a fair whack of credits to get it. But if you carry on, you can get this car at the end of the series because we'll have earned enough credits. Let's take a look at the settings. We're on a racing soft setting today, so this is going to be a two-stop strategy. We're going to go 5-5-5 five, five, five to complete the 15 race, 15 lap race. Fully customizable suspension, nothing is changed from default. You can pause the screen here and verify. Differential gear, fully customizable. We have adjusted that to 555. Downforce is 700 on the rear, all of it. And on the front, 411. We could probably go more, to be honest. No change on the fully customizable ECU or the power restrictor. Transmission is racing at 360 manual adjustment we have made no changes to default that is exactly what it is but you can verify that and change that as you wish medium rpm turbocharger now why the medium well it's fuel economy but it's also the fact that if you put the high turbo on you actually take a drop in pp so it's considered to be easier sorry harder to use the uh, the higher turbo that's going to take fuel consumption out of it but you'll go as fast as hell brake system we have got no changes everything is default until you get down to the brake control and we put it all the way to the rear front to try and take the weight off the rear no other changes let's get to the track here we are at the track settings for the race are going to be assists traction control one default abs everything else on active stability management on and counter steer assistance on strong Controller settings, controller steering sensitivity 5, force feedback max torque 5, force feedback sensitivity 6. Let's talk about what we've got then. So we're racing against a field of GR3s, we're grinding, we're attempting to earn as much possible to cash in as little possible time. So we're aiming for something around the 24, 25 minute mark, maybe 26. 27 we just need enough time every half an hour to get a pee and a break and a little bit of a drink because as old men we need that ready to get stuck in we'll talk about it as we go around here we go then fuel map we need to drop that to two just be aware as you go over the line there there's a little stutter in the gears and you just need to be ready to press the change up button because if not you'll end up stuck now I've had to force myself down the inside there because Mr. Wilk doesn't like you going around the outside this is a, a restart so uh, you'll understand that the first time I went around there he pushed me off into the gravel so I'm not going to let him do that this time already up to 4.5 on the fuel we just need to make sure we're saving some rear end is prepared to spin up quite a lot the hell paids are going to help us there we might have to drop to fuel map 3 you know up to 17th place Now this is a GR3, there is another GTR in the game that is a G GR2. We're not confusing it with that one. It is capable of running the race. 
but as it is a pure GR2 car we're just gonna leave that where it is for now this little GTR will do the trick 4.2 laps of fuel 4.1 I think we're gonna be all right on the fuel map too I think we're gonna save a little bit here here we go down the outside oh we're getting forced against the wall that's not friendly oh palupa doesn't like that do they gonna break on the 150 coming up to the back of the WRX of Mr. Hizal try and take him around the outside a little bit of a lift just to guarantee exit from the corner break on the dark stuff such a different corner when you have to make the right hand turn here we are good for fuel the two stop is going to have to be quite a fast one we're going to have to take all the fuel but we need to be up somewhere near this to Portilla when we actually make the stop I would suggest supper of Mr. Yamanaka Mr. Fraga is up there somewhere I would think feel to use feel free to use that little hump of grass as much as you see fit I've yet to lose the clean race bonus for bunny hopping that Nobody should be going to the pits yet. Be very careful about cars cutting across your chin there to make it into the pits. 3.8137. So not the fastest car we've had at this point in the race. Mr. Fraga here pushing on. dive down the inside of the Aston Martin there always feels like a bit of a police car skin that on the Aston Martin would well, maybe good to see out on the street half a second up we're up into third place Mr. Portilla leads Mr. Boubois we're in third Mr. Mendoza fourth Mr. Braga fifth Mr. Ordnath sixth Mr. Cookabun in seventh and Yamanaka pulling up the front runners in eighth place He'll probably go a little bit deeper there. The rear tyres are looking like they're suffering. We're still fast, they're still putting that potential fastest lap in into second place. And there's Mr. Portilla just ahead. Let's measure our approach here and let's not stuff it into a corner. Let's just overtake where we can. Mr. Bouvoir just balancing the brakes. Mr. Portilla racing away, and we have a fastest lap now in the 136s. Sixth gear is available to us. Keep braking on the 150, it's an insurance scam. Don't go beyond it, you'll feel that you're just absolutely off and over into the into the into the really go fast zone, and you'll stuff it into the uh, into the sand the 150 is where you brake you're not racing a car with absolutely fabulous brakes slowing down from what 170 180 mile an hour you need more than 100 yards it's it's a massive ask so brake on the 150 the rears are now over 50 percent burnt mr portilla is there ahead of us we don't know what strategy he's officially going to take Almost over at runner there as I'm just trying to go gentle on the brakes. But it's the throttle that's killing the rear tyres, not the braking. Just hop that. There we go. We've got 1.3 laps of fuel. As she just dives hungrily into that... Uh, 
our final corner. We look good. We look great for the actual pit stop amount of fuel. And Mr. Portilla has gone in. So he's gone in on lap four. We're going in the next lap. We can't forget. That's us into first place. Break on the 150. I said it was an insurance scam. That's probably not exactly what I meant. The insurance is there by breaking on the 150 to guarantee the corner. If you go deeper, it is a scam because you end up in the sand and the gravel. I've, I've worked that one out. It's not friendly. It lulls you into a false sense of security and you end up beached. It's not fun. You drop from first place to 14th. Just getting yourself out the deepest part of the sand. Here we go then folks, diving into the pits. 8.9 seconds in the lead. Taking the soft tyre is going to take all the fuel and a slurp of the drink. We're on the softies. Purely because we're stopping every, every five laps. Tyres being changed over stunning looking wheels that suit the car fuels going in and it's a fast filler everybody else has come into the pits just Mr Yamanaka going past to take the lead and we're away so Mr Yamanaka in the Supra we can break on the 100 having come out of the pits second gear into the apex Now you'll see that we made the change to 555 on the diff. You can try and do it without, but I found the back end to be a bit slidey. And also a bit aggressive on the exit of the corner. So we're managing to save a little bit of tyre with that setup. Now if we pace ourselves off Mr. Yamanaka here and short shift a little bit, we'll guarantee that we've got that extra bit of fuel. We're going to pass him going up the hill here, I would expect. Is he going to squeeze us? He does. But he's got a pit, so he's pushing fuel. So unlike the Tokyo race, we're not going to be able to match up exactly the cars with the drivers, but we're going to at least try and switch a Toyota driver for a Toyota car, maybe a Nissan driver for a Nissan car. We'll have to see how it goes. It would be nice to be able to keep some sort of familiarisation with the original race, but if we can't, it's not a problem. We know in that final custom race we're not going to earn exactly the money that we earn in this race. But we're going to make it a tough race by having some decent cars in. So we're looking good on fuel with 10 seconds in the lead ahead of Mr. Portilla. And we're going to see when he's going to pit, whether he's going to pit on lap 10, whether he's going to go that little bit longer. We've just got to try and push on impose ourselves on this race we've got the fastest lap of the race a 136.491 which I don't think will impress a lot of people but it's faster than the rest of the field the faster the race 
The fastest lap of the race is a fastest lap in the race. You can't knock it. Is this car as good as the R92? Certainly not. It's in a different class. But in a class of its own as the GT3 car, it's absolutely tip top. See if we can get this round with a nice, decent lap in. Plenty of fuel. This is the mid lap on this stint. I'd like to be able to set the fastest lap of the race again here. I don't know how we're going to do that. It's, we should be able to do it without having to overtake people. The fuel laps, left, the fuel weight is lessening. driving just a little bit conservative but we absolutely timed the fuel absolutely spot on in the first stint 0.6 of a second down and we're very cagey through there Very, very sloppy over there. A 137, so 0.6 down, which we didn't, we weren't unexpecting that. See if we can do it this lap. Mr. Portilla has gone to the pits, so we're 19 seconds ahead. He stopped the lap before us and two laps before us this time. I haven't seen a little time to stamp, so we are so we're point one and a half down, a tenth and a half out. Need to see if we can make that up. Mr. Portilla has dropped right down to tenth place, but everybody else is going to pit as well, aren't they? late into that corner we're a little bit away from laughing people I don't think we're going to be in that world with this car not this time round laps of fuel it's dropped to 1.0 we've been pushing hard we might have to fuel save just a touch I think we might be okay there's a 136 350 so six seconds slower a lap than the R92 our top performing car here to date and if you need to find that uh, that setup and car suggestion you just need to search for Sardo Grind or Sardinia Grind R92 and you'll find that. Mr. Boubois has gone to the pits as we put in a purple sector. won't be completing this lap we will be going to the pits to complete this lap Mr Hazal's gone in Mr Fraga now in second place some 38 seconds behind so we're pulling out a healthy lead
just gone to zero zero but it won't run out until it goes to naught point minus naught point one it ran out just as we were entering soft tires we'll take all the fuel yeah it has to go past the zero zero for it to actually run out are we going to get out of the pit before everybody joins us it says we're 40.5 seconds ahead tires are all changed fuels all going and it's fairly fist fast filler must be a small tank here we go on the way the team fill her up and she away up to second gear 40 point something seconds which they're gonna now stop and fuel one would suggest mr. Praga goes in 42 seconds back because he's dived into the pit stop we're on our last stint now five laps to the end of the race and we've got to make sure we get there because we're going to run out of fuel just before the start finish line as we dive in too deep i kept my foot on the throttle so mr fraga is also on softs everybody else is on hards was a massive steal across that landmass there then wasn't it so the times have settled down we are 35 seconds in the lead mr portilla is now the chase car in second place but this car is absolutely loving it we just keep it in the outside curve maybe we can just back off on that curb a little bit we're just starting to conserve fuel that little bit more because we're short shifting and here's our first lap car the Porsche Mr. Innerstroza just making room for us there I'm sure that Porsche can go much faster around this circuit than is demonstrated by Mr. Innerstroza. I think he uh, is feeling a bit wounded from the Deep Forest race. But who can blame him when you're in the fastest car on the track and you're lapped three times? Absolutely awesome. You lap him every ten laps in that little car. They'll love to hate me, they really will. However, ending lap 12 now. As we dive into this almost hairpin, one would say. It's, it's like a 120 degree bend where you come back on yourself. Here we go, just short shift across the line, 3.1. That'll give us a chance to get to the line with the right amount of fuel. It turns to 3.0 as we go across the line. 41 seconds in the lead break on the 150. See the propeller blades of the turbine. They absolutely frighten the life out of me when they're swinging away overhead. They're the most beautiful thing I see on my way to work every morning is this farming field of of propellers of uh, of uh, wind turbines they're absolutely stunning I know some people hate them and think they're a blot on the landscape but they are they're a majestic thing they remind me of the war of the worlds and I do it's some if you've never heard of the war of the worlds by Jeff Wayne I I must recommend that you, you find The War of the Worlds, not the film, 
for the audio book and find a moment I say a moment it's like three hours to put them on or the album you can buy the album you can download it off wherever but listen to Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds it's absolutely epic it is absolutely brilliant and the films aren't too bad if you pick up on them they are there's a couple of shocking efforts by a particular actor we won't just diss him because he he does quite well he's the superhero type but uh, yeah war of the worlds absolutely fabulous soundtrack here we go lap 14 let's focus on the gtr for a little bit looks like we've got the fuel now to get us to the end of the race I don't think we're totally committed to putting in a fast lap. I think we're just at the point of getting the car to the end. The rears are suffering. The fronts are just looking absolutely fine. With that, we could probably apply the downforce, the bit of missing downforce to the front and see how they go. We get a little rub there from uh, Mr. Solis. He was just saying hello and welcome to the family. And uh, he just wanted to be involved as we approach the back end of the Lexus. A little way to go. I don't think we're going to lap everybody in the field. But we're doing as much as we possibly can. That oh, RCF's a decent car though, isn't it? I do like the RCF. Mr. Matson Unger races that round uh, Lego. It's a decent car. Did the LFA ever make it to the game? I don't think it did, did it? Absolute stunning piece of equipment. 1.1 laps to go up to fifth gear early. See if it can serve that little bit to get to the finish line for the final lap here we go lap six lap 15 sorry my brain is often well further ahead than my mouth or is it my mouth that's further ahead than my brain often saying the words before I've even thought about it however oh Mr Gallo I never liked lapping Mr. Gallo. It seems such a painful experience for him. But to do it on the last lap as well, just to uh, I mean he's only done 14 laps, just makes me happier. There we go. Just where you need to be. We never like to rub it in. Back tyres really starting to scream at me now. Mr. Boubois goes to the pits with one lap remaining. Mr. Fraga is out there still pushing on. Mr. Portilla now actually out in seventh place, not really looking like he's making inroads. Oh, there's a whole portion of the field there that we could uh, be catching before the final, final there. Oh, they're all going to make it. We've got 0.3 on the fuel. Some people go to the pits. Will they be able to come out of the pits before the race is over, one asks. Over a minute in the lead, and there we go through the final finish. Well, what do we think? It is an absolute stunning car. It's nothing compared to the R92, have we said, but it's very capable, it's able, it's fast enough. Two pit stops doesn't really hinder the car. The setup's fairly decent. You could probably tweak it yourself a little bit with some suspension setups to try and even out that tyre wear. But it's uh, a pretty decent pit of kit. Look at that, a 25-24. So perfectly enough time to nip to the loo, get a new drink. We lapped down to 11th place, the Supra. And everybody was lapped there. Fastest lap of the race was ours, a 136-350. Decent car, I enjoyed that little race. And you too can. Let's see what we get. 727-500. Clean race bonus is there. Takes us to 6.5 million buck. Everybody's happy with that. 10 million is just around the corner. Let's see where we go. Thank you very much for ticking with us, folks. We'll see you on the next one. All the best. Take care. Don't forget, any suggestions, chip in the comments below. You can uh, might see the car you nominate get a, get a race in. We'll see you on the next one. All the best.